Hey everyone, welcome back to our second video on comparison tests for infinite series. We already talked about direct comparison test in our last video. Here we're going to talk about the limit comparison test. A similar thing here, except we don't just compare greater than or less than with the limit comparison test. We look at the limit of the terms of the series we are trying to figure out divided by the terms of the series we know its behavior. And we look at the limit of that. We call it L, obviously, like we usually do with limits. The idea is if you get some positive real number, so something between zero and infinity, then they both do the same thing, right? They both converge the series or they both diverge. So just keep in mind that the sum of a sub n is the series you're trying to decide converges or diverges. The sum of b sub n, remember this series is something that you choose that you know for sure already when you choose it whether it converges or diverges. You'll need to know that. Looking at why they will both have the same behavior, let's say, for example, the limit of this is 3, right? So you have the terms of a sub n on top, the terms of b sub n on the bottom, and after, you know, hundreds or thousands or millions of terms, this expression eventually looks about like the number 3, right? So at some point and beyond, basically, that's saying the top looks like pretty much 3 times the bottom, right? So after some point, um, the series that we started with behaves like three times the other series, okay? And so obviously if this series is an infinite amount, then we would have an infinite amount. If this series was some real number, then this would just behave like three times that real number. This doesn't mean that they sum to, you know, this sums to three times this. It just means that at some point it starts looking like three times the other series. So they behave similarly in that they both converge or they both diverge. They won't actually be a, a direct multiple of one another. Okay, so looking at the sum of 1 over n squared minus 1, which is one that we couldn't figure out based on the inequality direction in our direct comparison test video for infinite series. So we'll think of this as what we're trying to decide converges or diverges. This is our sum of a sub n in the limit comparison test. We want to choose something maybe that is a similar series to this that we know its behavior. So let's say that we choose 1 over n squared. This comparison didn't work with direct comparison, but you'll see that it works out with limit comparison test here. So the limit comparison test says I look at the limit of the terms of what I'm trying to decide over the terms of what I'm comparing it to. So I go ahead and write that down as a limit. I write those in, so the limit of 1 over n squared minus 1 over 1 over n squared. Um, since I have a fraction divided by a fraction, I can go ahead and bump this up and multiply by the reciprocal. So that'll put the n squared on top. So simplifying that gives us the limit of n squared over n squared minus 1. You can see that these are the same degree. You compare the coefficients, or you could use two iterations of L'Hopital's rule. Um, that gives us that the limit is 1. And again, remember with this test, if the limit is a real number between 0 and infinity, that means these are going to have the same overall behavior. So since the limit is some real number between 0 and infinity, we know that both of these series will have the same behavior. And since I should know that 1 over n squared, this series, is a p-series with p equals 2, it converges, then I also know that my original converges by limit comparison to this because I got a limit when I compared them, that is, some real number between 0 and infinity. Taking a look at 4 over n plus 1, this will be our sum of a sub n, so that's the series we're trying to figure out. Let's say we choose something to compare it to. I have a single power of n on the bottom, so let's say I choose 1 over n, that's the harmonic series. I know this diverges, so that's a good choice. It looks similar to that, and I know the behavior of this right off the bat. So I go ahead and look at the limit of my terms of what I'm trying to decide over the terms of what I'm comparing to. So that's 4 over n plus 1 over 1 over n, taking the limit as n goes to infinity of that. We go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal of 1 over n. That's going to put an n on the top for us. So we get the limit of 4n over n plus 1. We have the same degree of term here. We can compare the lead coefficients 4 over 1 or take L'Hopital's rule one time. And we'll get that the limit is 4. 
And so since we get a limit of four, and that limit is a real number between zero and infinity, we know that both of these are going to have the same type of behavior as far as converging or diverging. Since we know this is the harmonic series, or that this is a p series with p equals one, I know this diverges, and so this limit tells me that this also does the same thing. That will diverge because we compared to the sum of one over n using the limit comparison test. Here we have the sum of 1 over 2 to the n minus 3, so this is what I'm trying to decide converges or diverges. This is my sum of a sub n. If I think about maybe a simpler version of something that looks like this that we might know the convergence or divergence of, I might just choose the sum of 1 over 2 to the n. This is a geometric series and the ratio is 1 half. You might be able to tell by looking at that. So we go ahead and we set up our limit of my a sub n terms over my b sub n terms. We get 1 over 2 to the n minus 3 over 1 over 2 to the n. We go ahead and take this division by fraction, bump it up and multiply by the reciprocal again. So that gives us the limit of 2 to the n over 2 to the n minus 3. What you might notice is this infinite growth over this infinite growth, the minus 3 isn't going to mean much. You can also take L'Hopital's rule um, one time and decide, of course, that the limit here is going to be 1. You can work that out, the derivative of the top and the bottom. We get a limit of 1. That's a real number. That's between 0 and infinity. So that means both of these again are going to have the same convergence or divergence. Um, since we know that this is a geometric series and the ratio is 1 half, this converges. So that means that my original, when I compare it using limit comparison test with my sum of 1 over 2 to the n, that also converges. Our overall statement of the limit comparison test looks like this. So we have series that we want to know the behavior of, convergence or divergence, and we have some other series we compare it to, right? And they both have positive terms. Our limit L is this ratio of a sub n over b sub n. So if we get some real number between 0 and infinity, then they both have the same convergence or divergence behavior. We have a couple of outliers, sort of, and I'll talk through these briefly. Um, there are a couple of other cases that we do use sometimes when we look at the limit comparison test. The second one here, if the limit is zero and what we're choosing to compare to converges, then what we started with originally also converges as well. The idea with this, if you remember when we looked at the beginning of the video, say the limit was three and we looked at this thing eventually looking like three times the other one. If the limit is zero, that means eventually these terms a sub n, that thing that we started with, eventually look like nothing compared to the b sub n terms. That's what that's saying. So if this converges, it adds up to a real number, and this eventually is so much smaller than this that it looks like nothing, well of course it's going to be smaller, right? Of course it's going to be some real number. So that's also going to converge. If we have what we're comparing to has a divergent behavior, so it adds up to some infinite amount, then imagine what's going on with a limit of infinity. That means, as far as a ratio goes, that the top terms look much, much, infinitely larger than the bottom terms past some point, right, as we get farther and farther out in the list of terms. So if this is infinitely large, and when I compare it to the b sub n terms, those terms look even bigger than that, then of course that one is also going to diverge as well. Now what we may get is the test can possibly fail, um, and it's really in looking at these couple of things here. We might get a limit of zero, but maybe your sum of b sub n diverges, then we would get a failure. Or maybe you get a limit of infinity, and your sum of b sub n converges. Then we don't really know for sure, so it is possible even with the these additional two items in the list that we have a case where the test fails. So let's look at an example where we have a series uh, and we get one of these things where it's not between zero and infinity, it's one or the other. So I have a sum from one to infinity ln of n over n squared. So ln of n over n squared is my a sub n and what I'm choosing to compare to, let's say maybe some sort of thing that looks similar to this, I have an n squared on the bottom. So let's just say I choose one over n squared to be my b sub n that I'm comparing it to. So I look at the limit 
of a sub n over b sub n. So I get the limit of this over this. Well, if I'm dividing by this, I think maybe we can skip a step here and see that the n squared is going to end on the top, right? If I divide by this, that's like multiplying by n squared. So I get n squared ln n over n squared. Well, that of course will reduce the n squareds at least. So we get just the limit of the ln of n. And if you look at the limit of ln of n, remember this is logarithmic growth and logarithmic growth is infinite. So we do actually get uh, an infinite limit there. So in this case, I have an infinite limit. So I look at this here and I say, my limit's infinity, b sub n diverges. That tells me that the original thing I was trying to decide diverges. The problem is um, b sub n as a series, the sum of this is a p series, p is two. So this series actually converges, so it doesn't fit this. I get a limit of infinity, but b sub n sum converges. So I'm not actually gonna get any information out of this if I choose one over n squared to be my b sub n. So we get that the test fails in this instance. So maybe we go back now and we choose a different b sub n. Let's say we just choose one over n, right? So we'll go ahead and do that and look at the limit now. Well, the limit then would just put an n on the top instead of an n squared on the top. And if we evaluate this limit, we reduce the n here with one of the copies of n down below. That still gives us the limit of ln of n over n. This is logarithmic growth, if you remember, and this, is, this would be polynomial growth. So this is an indeterminate form, but we know shortcuts for this. Um, this limit's going to be zero. You can use L'Hopital's rule one time if you want to check that. We get a limit of zero. So looking up here, if the limit is zero and my sum that I'm comparing to converges, then I get an answer. Um, the problem is what I'm choosing, b sub n, the sum of one over n actually diverges. So I got a limit of zero, but my sum diverged. So I, again, don't get any information. This test will fail as well. So we're gonna go ahead and try one more in between these. Let's choose the sum of one over n to the three halves, the one and a half power of n basically, right? So it's kind of in the middle of these two with its exponents. So we look at the limit of these, we would end up with the limit of n to the three halves, ln n over n squared. And then I would get rid of three halves, copies of n, I'd get rid of three halves, one and a half copies of n here. That would give me a half of a copy left on the bottom, also known as square root of n. So I get logarithmic growth over polynomial growth, and that limit will be zero. Now in this case, it's good because the sum of one over n to the three halves, that's a p series and p is greater than one. So the sum of b sub n is actually going to converge. I got a limit of zero my sum of b sub n converges, so I do in fact know that the original thing I was trying to decide converges by limit comparison, but it really only worked when I picked a very specific power of n. So, you know, once you try the test once or twice, you might decide, you know, maybe this isn't the best test to figure out convergence or divergence for something, and that could surely be the case. Um, every now and then you will just get a particular series that's very, very picky about what you choose. You know, you go one way and you get fails this way, you go another way and it's too far, it fails the other way. So you might need to choose something down the middle. That'll kind of be up to you to decide if you wanna you know, spend more time, keep going with this limit comparison test or choose one of the other tests. Okay, hopefully this gives you a good idea of how to use the limit comparison test for infinite series. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you in the next video.